I've written a lot about comiXology recently, and really, um, I just discovered one of the biggest benefits, and that's the fact that I can go back and I can find um, issues that have come out months or even years ago, and I can get them really cheaply. I don't have to worry about a premium on the fact that there are issues that are um, very rare. You know, I can get issues like Batman number 38 for only a dollar or two dollars. So I decided part of what I do at Comic Pow is take an issue that I like to um, take a look at from Comixology, and the issue is going to be at least a month old, if not a little more. And in that in that case, um, all these um, reviews will have um, spoilers and reveals because we know um, what happened. Um, the issues are old enough that you don't have to worry too much about spoilers. Today's um, issue is Gotham City Sirens number 20. Now, Gotham City Sirens is the comic book that is most directly responsible for the fact that I'm now reading comics again. I went into my uh, local comic shop one day um, just because um, my wife wanted to get some TCBY and it's in the same shopping center and I happened to see Gotham City Sirens and it had um, my favorite character Harley and I also like Poison Ivy a lot. Catwoman, I could care less, but um, I thought it was interesting, so I decided to check it out. Long story short, I've bought hundreds of comics in the last couple of years, and I'm really enjoying myself. So, um, when I got to um, Gotham City Sirens, it was almost time for the New 52. And I feel like the series ended a little prematurely, and um, you know I was not really a big fan of the last couple issues, um, but that's where I started. And then I started going back and getting the, the trades. Well, between the third trade and what I had, I was only missing a few issues, so I decided to get them on Comixology. The interesting thing about this issue, um, so, well, actually, first, to, um, to back up, um, in Gotham City Sirens, um, Poison Ivy, Harley, and Catwoman have teamed up, and they're living together, and they're just trying to um, get by um, in a world. Um, it kind of straddles between Batman R.I.P. and when Batman comes back, but basically, you know, they're just trying to um, get along, maybe not um, do so much criminal stuff as before, and just have legitimate lives. Now, um, when we get to 20, we're getting near the end of, of um, the whole thing. We've had a bunch of arcs where basically we've dealt with each character. We had one with a lot of about Selena Kyle, one with a lot about Poison Ivy, and now this one's been mostly about Harley. When the last issue ended, um, Harley was going back to um, Arkham Asylum to kill Joker. And basically, when this issue begins, that's where she is. She's on her way to kill Joker. Um, I think that this um, issue really moves Harley forward a lot as a character. Um, in a way, it's kind of a shame that she got um, rebooted into a more uh, grimy character with the New 52. But nevertheless, this is a really good um, evolution on her character. Um, she's, she goes into Arkham Asylum, and basically, you get to see a side of her that's not so ditzy, not so crazy. You know, it kind of reminds you, hey, she was a psychologist. She is an intelligent person. She just kind of acts all crazy around Joker. Um, in particular, um, she, had, she faces um, three different obstacles on her way in, and she's brought something along that will deal specifically with each one. Um, while she was at Arkham, she basically made it her business to learn everyone's secrets, and now she's able to use it to manipulate them, you know, as she goes into this issue. One character... Um, he, you know, he likes marbles because as a kid, that played a really key role in his life. Um, another character, um, she liked flowers. Um, and the final character, well, it was Clayface, and it had to do with a crowbar. The most interesting thing about these parts where they're demonstrating how Harley knows all these things about these characters is that um, the artwork is beautiful. Um, you see, in the marble page, you've got like a series of marbles there that are showing what's going on um, for for um, for um, Clayface a big important thing is the crowbar and you've got this whole crowbar imagery there and I think it's it's really neat the way they've done that um, really good props to to the um, to the artist um, Bach um, and basically um, you know she's Joker um, Harley's making her way to Joker and uh, when you get to the end of the issue, it's just um, her and uh, one security guard left between her and Joker. And she says she wants to kill him. Now, um, well, you know, basically what, I, what I'm curious to see is, I already know, and we already know, because um, it's been so many months, 
that when she finally reunites with Joker, somehow she ends up teaming up with him. Um, one of the first issues that I got um, when, I, when I was getting into the Gotham City Sirens is her teaming up with Joker um, as they take over all of Arkham Asylum. So what I'm really curious to see is what does he do to manipulate her again? I mean, she's the master manipulator. She's done it with all these people all the way through to get in. But yet, somehow, um, he's going to do it back to her. Uh, Joker's going to do it back to her and basically complete the cycle, show that really no matter how much she tries to grow, she can't get over him. And that has been a pretty big, important arc throughout all of Gotham City Sirens. There was a huge arc there where um, I think they went back to about the Silver Age and saw this um, this old henchman of Joker's and how he felt replaced by Harley and all that stuff. So it'll be really interesting to see what happens, um, how they get back together. And um, definitely, um, if you haven't, read Gotham City Sirens, I would definitely recommend getting all the trades or just buy them at Comixology.